So exercising the gift of discernment, sifting the messages, the actions, the directives, the character of events that are coming at you to distinguish, is this of God or is this not of God? It's each one of our responsibilities to be able to discern and distinguish messages and to make decisions in our own life as mature believers. And this is a really important season where we have no choice but you know, to exercise that gift. Walking by faith is walking by spiritual sight and not by what we see about us in the flesh. It's seeing and hearing in the spirit realm, not seeing and hearing in the flesh realm. And so we need to ask, give me, Lord, the gift of discernment. Teach me to walk in wisdom. Lord, I'm going to wait on you. And I'm going to listen and when the Holy Spirit prompts you or um, warns you in the spirit realm, you'll see signs and you'll be given instructions, warning directions from God if you belong to him and you're open to his voice and you haven't rejected and hardened your heart to him, then you will hear and he will speak to you, which is why this message um, this week was so important. Seek me and I will be found by you. Seek my heart. Knock and the door will be open to you. It's not a game. It's not a game. Jesus is not playing a game with us that we are designed to lose. He's not manipulating us, you know, hiding things that we aren't supposed to find. The purpose of his declarations and his teaching and three years of ministry on earth was to demonstrate to us what is heaven like and to invite us into that relationship and into that kingdom so we have to look to the cross the center point of human history uh, we have to look at the scriptures and read what he did what he said and ponder why what was he saying here who was he talking to uh, those who have ears to hear open their ears they hear with their heart they're humble they're teachable and they're hungry. So they pursue and they seek after understanding. They ponder the things that Jesus said. They don't dismiss them, harden their hearts and turn their back. Now, that would be to choose the darkness. That would be to choose unbelief. And that's an active decision. Now, for those of us who perhaps don't have the faith to believe because we just can't imagine Go back to the scriptures, go back to Jesus teaching and ponder, seek, ask, consider, meditate on the things that he said about the kingdom of heaven, the things that he did to demonstrate what the kingdom of heaven was like. And that's how we learn, we grow in our capacity to distinguish and discern is this of God, Eli Hod? Is this for his glory or is this for the glory of men? Is this good? Is this um, peaceful? Is this kind, joyous, for my best interests? Is this freedom? The kingdom of God is freedom. Is this safe? Is this love? God is love. Yeah. The nine fruits of the Spirit are helpful to go back and consider as well. The fruits of the Spirit are the manifestations of His character living in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, long-suffering is the other way to say it. We go back to those character qualities and ponder the miracles and the signs and the wonders that Jesus did and his teaching to consider what it is that he was trying to convey and where it is that he's still leading us today. Nothing's changed. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light have not changed. And there are only two kingdoms. We come to a crossroads, there's either left or there's right. We either follow in faith or we turn our back in unbelief. And we choose to reject Jesus. And when we do that, that, that kingdom has a character as well. That kingdom has a character of independence, self-reliance, rebellion, manipulation, 
control, deception. When we see those character qualities manifest, we know that that's not of God because his sheep bow to him. His sheep hear his voice and they follow him and they manifest the fruit of that kingdom. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness and self-control. Responsibility. Jesus was the mature example of what it is to be fully human. And so when we want to know which way should we go, uh, what is it to be to be good? What is it to be in his kingdom and to follow and to serve him? He's our example. He's the one that we look to to imagine what it's like to be a son or a daughter of God. He's the one who has set the example for us. So as Jeremiah was saying to the people of Israel in the Old Testament who didn't know Jesus, these people had lived without the revelation of Christ, the revelation of God made man manifest in man. He says to them, nonetheless, stand at the crossroads and look. Look for the ancient paths. Look where the good way is and walk in it. The kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness have nothing in common. And way back 4,000 years, 6,000 years ago, God's people were called to choose. And so today we are called to choose at this crossroads in history where everything is being shaken around us and messages of deception and manipulation and control are being amplified and spruiked on every corner. We are being asked to choose. Where is your faith? What stone, foundation stone, have you built your life, your family, or your church on? Is this the rock of revelation of the anointed one that Peter saw? Uh, or is it something else? Financial success, uh, beauty, popularity, other people's opinion perhaps, power, status in society, family, family history, maybe marriage, maybe moral uh, you know, superiority, maybe perfection. None of those things are the rock of revelation of who Christ is. None of those things. Uh, so this season he's asking you, He's shaken away those things. He's shaken away your confidence and your trust in inferior things in order to expose you, cause you to be vulnerable and to seek him, to seek that rock of revelation. And in him, everything you desire, every need that you have is fulfilled hidden in Christ, everything you desire is in him. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have come and given your life for us, that you chose the cup of punishment so that we could be free from the consequences of the fallen man, from our personal sin, but from our inheritance under Adam. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have come and you have taken away the consequence of the sin that we inherited. Thank you that we are perfectly free. When we receive you, we are free. Free from sin, free from sickness, free from condemnation. And rather than confusion, we enter into a covenant of peace uh, where you dwell with us 24-7 where you speak to us like little children and you provide for our needs at just the right time. Thank you that you've made it so easy to know you. Whether we have a book or we don't have a book, you reveal yourself to us in nature, in the things that you've made. You reveal yourself to us in signs and dreams and wonders, knowing in our heart, you reveal yourself to us sovereignly 
even though maybe nobody's ever preached a message to us ever you can still reach into the dark places uh, and connect with the people that you're calling thank you jesus that we have nothing to fear in this season of chaos and that it's your heart's desire that we would be stripped of inferior distractions and that we, we would set our eyes on a kingdom that is unseen on an eternal kingdom of light and hope and joy And bless these people today, Lord Jesus, as they come into your presence and seek your heart for their lives. Jesus, reveal yourself to them in beautiful ways. Strip away the inferior. Fill them with faith and open their eyes to see your kingdom coming.